YouTube. It is Sunday the 11th of February 2018. I've been to the car boot sale and I thought I would do my my live chat and haul video for you. There we go, video for you. In my delightfully tidy room with the hoover in the background as usual. So um, just me at the moment. Oh no, Cat's Vance is in. Hi Cat's Vance. Um, I didn't didn't do a live stream last Sunday because I ended up going to an extra car boot. So good morning, Maisie Moo. Sorry, Missy Moo. Ended up going to an extra car boot sale instead of coming back and doing a live stream. It wasn't really worth the trek. Hi, Liam. But um, yes, we didn't go. We didn't go again this week. But we'll go in the summer probably. That's the oval one we'll go to. Hi, Karen. No crafts, not just more. And hi, Lex Oliver. Nice to see you all this morning. I am looking pretty rough. You have to excuse the awful fringe. I'm going to jump in the shower after I finish doing this and try and do something about this dreadful hair day that I'm having. I could just pin it all back and just sit here with my massive eight head on display, couldn't I? What do you think? That is a big forehead, isn't it? It's plainly because I've got such a large brain. Plainly why. Uh, Steve Green's in and says, what up, savages? Ryan says, remember, it's just what, Carla? It's just... Can you see that now? A good day. Remember, it's just a good day. <laughs> Mrs. Happy Daffy Michelle is in. Lex Oliver was just watching Steve Green's channel. If you're not subscribed, run over to the Steve Green Adventure and, uh, and subscribe over there. Don't run that in, run afterwards, otherwise you'll miss me talking crap. And uh, Jay Ben's in, and Ryan says, every day in life is a good day. Every day you're alive is a good day, mate. This is so true. I've uh, lost a good friend this week, unexpectedly, at, at far too young to die age. And yeah, every day you're alive is a good day. There we go, that's a cheerful note, isn't it? My fringe looks shocking. Hang on a second. Just tune in for half an hour of Carla trying to deal with her fringe live on camera. Is that better? It won't, it won't last. I'll end up messing about with it again in a minute. So, uh, quick haul video. Nothing very exciting today. Again, my car boot's really quite small at the moment. Good morning, Carrie. Really quite a small car boot at the moment, but, you know, you don't go, you don't get. I got a money tin. These are not... Do you remember I bought the old one a couple of weeks ago? These are not particularly old, these ones, but they're still quite popular with the sections inside and the bit on the side where you can write where you got this one only has one key but at least it has a key you know because usually when you find these things these days these days the key is missing i paid a pound for that and i'll probably get a tenner if i'm lucky on that one we just clear a space to put the junk there we go and uh good morning adele my most expensive item that i bought this week is these, these hotter shoes i paid four pound for these as you can see they're in their box um, I think they've probably been worn once, if that. The lady said she'd only worn them once, and I had no reason to disbelieve her. The, the soles are in lovely condition, and I'll probably get 20-ish for those. So, four quid's not bad. I did that thing where I went four pound at the car boot sale. I thought, hang on, if I saw those in a charity shop for four pound, I'd buy them really quickly. So, um, quite why I was... I think it's just that at the car boot, we expect it all to be like 5p, yeah? <laughs> uh... Cat's France says full fringes are a nightmare. Yes, see? Terrible fringe problem. Jason Entwistle's in. Sammy the Seal's in and says, how much have I missed? Nothing, I've just started. Mary Miller's in. Somebody smells. Who smells? Ah, oh, the Steve Green Adventure. Can you please say hello to Lacey? I want to prove her wrong. If you... Okay, Lacey. Good morning, Lacey. Lacey Green, you smell. You are stinky, stinky, stinky. <laughs> Lacey, I'm sure you don't smell. It's just that Daddy's really mean. There we go. <laughs> um... Where Karen says, have I got much of a backlog? I've got this little bit in the cupboard, Karen, and I've got a few toys upstairs, and that's it. So I've uh, I've worked my way through some of my backlog in the last week. I haven't done very much sourcing. Uh, Anna Banana, Anna Banan. Hi, <laughs> that's, a, that's a heck of a tongue twister. I'm all right with tongue twisters, but that one's a heck of one anyway. I've got a Peruna grey knitted dress, which I paid a pound for. It doesn't have a belt. It has belt loops, but no belt. So um, it'll have to be listed as such. But even so, for a knit dress for a quid from Perona, not bad, not bad at all. That'll, be, that'll, uh, that'll probably get me 15 quid, I would have thought. The hotter shoes, did I say I should get 20 plus for those? Yeah, I think I said that. My hands are freezing. I warmed up after the car boot. It was so cold at the car boot that the tips of my fingers all went white, which I think is like, like frostbite or something, isn't it? So I nearly died. Nearly died from the fingers out. Terrible thing. Um, I got a potato head for 50p. He's got several out of rummage for his bits. He's got some bits missing. He's got no ears. 
no ears and no hat, but he has got a tongue and so I've stuck a tongue in his head as a kind of a Mohican. There we go. Works reasonably well, doesn't it? His, his mouth's on upside down. A bit of a drawback in life. How's that? There we go. 50p. 50p for a potato head, which, as you know, classic line, will go in a bundle. I had to rummage. I had to bend and rummage for ages for all his parts. All his parts were loose in the bottom of the box. But I'm sure he was worth it in the end. And I got these three, which she had them marked up at £1, £1 and 50p, and I paid £2 for the lot. So there's two Sophie La Giraffe and a Sophie La Giraffe teether. Uh, one is more faded than the other, which is why she had one at a pound and one at 50p. The faded one I might give to the dog. He, he loves these. Absolutely, he's had about eight of them. They last about two seconds once he gets hold of them. But if he hasn't got a squeak, then it won't be into If it doesn't squeak, he won't care. Oh, this one doesn't squeak. Yeah, he won't love that. He won't love that at all. The darker one does squeak, but he's not having that. She doesn't squeak, darling. And these ones, these ones, funnily enough, these go for about 10 quid. So your guess is as good as mine. You can have her, but she doesn't squeak. So I don't think you'll love her. There you go. You take her away. Good boy. He'd be very disappointed. He'd be, he'd be trying to find the squeak. And when it won't squeak, he'll be devastated. That's it. He's going to go and sit on my bed and rip her head off now. <laughs> Peter Ray's in. Good morning, Peter Ray. I don't think I've missed anyone. Oh, Lucy T. Hi, Lucy. And then I got a pile of stuff for three quid off my car boot guy. So I'll see if I can rummage it all out and show you it all in one go. And wait, wait for the horrible crash. You know how you, you know the rules. There's always a horrible crash at some point. I really did get a good pile of stuff from him. This is only going to be a short video today, by the way, guys, because I've got to be elsewhere this afternoon. And I can't go elsewhere with this fringe. Amanda Yates has joined us. Hi, Amanda. So for my car boot guy, for my for three quid, I got a large print Scrabble, which I've never bought before. Never bought the large print one, but we'll have a, we'll have a go. And a Scrabble Deluxe. Now, my parents gave me a bag full of stuff to sell a couple of weeks ago, and there was a Scrabble Deluxe in there. And that sold really, really well. So um, bear in mind, this all of, all of what I'm about to show you was three quid all in. So there's those two. Oh, bloody heavy dead arms a calf kidston sectioned plate these sell really really well this one's in beautiful condition i would say barely barely used so calf kidston sectioned plate this little chap who i've never seen before but i just thought it was really cute look at this little blue stripey comforter dude under the nile the brand now i've never heard of that i haven't researched it i don't know if it's worth anything at all but I just thought it was really, really cute. And it's the kind of thing that a child loses and a parent replaces, which is what we like. <laughs> and then these three books are for me. This is not an author I've seen before, but the one of the reviews on the cover said PG Woodhouse like characters. And I, I like a murder mystery. I like PG Woodhouse. So these are uh, Herring, the Herring in the Library, the Herring Seller's Apprentice and Herring on the Nile. Um, and they are murder mysteries set in kind of like the 20s, which is just the kind of things I like. The, uh, the protagonist is called Ethelred Tresider. 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 I'm sure you're loving this. I'm sure this is absolutely enthralling. Those are for me. <laughs> still in my three quid. Five roll dolls. That's still in my three quid. We're still in that three quid. This was not a bad bundle for three quid, was it? My bloody hands. Now, you know, I've bought several Jammy Dodgers biscuit tins recently and done quite well with them. I saw this one. I don't know if it's got any value or not, but it was in with my three quid. Should we see if it's got old biscuit in it? They usually have, haven't they? Oh, no, it's clean, look. It's clean. No, no old cruddy bits of biscuit in there. So whether or not there's any value, I mean, this is plainly a fairly modern tin, but, but I've done all right out of the other ones. It's going to be a crash. Also in my three quid... The last item out of my three quid is a pair of Peruna black boot cut jeans. <laughs> J True's in. Good morning, J True. Ryan says I'm the only person who knows who doesn't like a clean tin. I like a clean tin. <laughs> Peruna boot cut jeans. Carrie says it's snowing in Devon. Peter Ray, any more challenge items sold since the last one? I've sold a couple of my um, challenge with Caroline items. I have not sold my one pound challenge item. That pink coat that I was so confident about, bought it for a quid. That's definitely going to sell. Not a flicker. Might have to reduce the price on that one because my pound challenge has grown to a halt until I can sell that one. 
Lady Lolly says she's just coming from dog walking in the snow. She'll catch this later. Hope it doesn't snow here. And Ryan says, how is my how's my sales been? I'm on target times 3.7 or something like that, I think. So yeah, it's been okay. It's not a bad week. J Ben says, I was going to send you a link to under the Nile page, but it won't accept it. Can you see it, Carla? I don't think it lets you put links up in the chat. I think we've tried this before. Um, so no, no, I can't see that. You, I mean, you could send it to me through Facebook if you wanted, J Ben, or if not, I'll have a Google, but thank you for looking. Hopefully you're, hopefully you're sending me a link to show me that they're massively expensive and they're what celebrities buy. That's what I'd like to hear. You're probably sending me a link that shows me the whole 10p. Last item, last item for my haul, tarot cards. Tarot cards usually do well. I don't know whether these ones will. Shall I have a quick research? If I research, it means I lose the chat, so you will be good while I'm not looking. Uh, this is Jonathan D. Tarot. Let's have a look. John Athon, Athan, Jonathan D. Tarot. Oh yeah, that's worth oh, all of a quid. Maybe two quid. That'd be exciting then. Yeah, that was it. Again, it was it cost me a pound, it's not the end of the world. Um go back to the chat. No, they're not worth a million quid. <laughs> Lisa Friends joined us. Hi Lisa. Oh, it's flipping chilly. And that's it, that was all I bought. So this is um not a very long video. Don't know how long I've been on for, but not a very long video. Started streaming 11 minutes ago. Shall I run away now then? Or should we check? Oh, sh sh shall I show you what else I got? <laughs> what I've got? Look. Can you see what these are? Look. Reese's peanut butter eggs. And I've got... 10 of them! Ah! They're two for a pound. Two for a pound. I have a problem. I have a problem. I need I need some kind of Reese's peanut butter intervention. Not from you. Dogs try a stage and intervention. They're amazing. They're massive. Look, look, look at that. Look at that peanut buttery goodness. They're so good. They're so good. If there are people out there with a fetish for watch, watching fat birds stuff their faces, they will be ecstatic about this. Yeah, I love these bloody love these thinking of putting them on my ebay page as a payment method will accept cash checks postal order reese's peanut butter eggs yeah it does not say easter on them no ryan you better be lying ryan says they're stopping reese's peanut butter in december this year you better be thinking you're funny mate that may not be true. Hmm. Um. Hmm. G-Man says, let's have one. You can do one, mate. Nobody's getting these. Nobody's getting these. These are mine. Nom, nom, nom. Mm -hmm. I got in the car. My friend Sibs was in the car. I got in the car with my 10 peanut butter eggs. And she took one off me and started looking at it. And I was like, you know when your eyes start flickering? And I was like, is she going to open it? Is she going to eat it? Is she going to eat one of my eggs? Because the thing is, as a reasonable, civilly behaved, well brought up adult, if she wants one of my eggs, I've got to let her have it because she's my friend and I've got ten. But they're my ten. I bought ten because I want ten. I don't want to share. Luckily, she didn't want one because it was before breakfast. Phew. Changing the recipe. No. Can't change the recipe for peanut butters. It's just peanuts. How can you change the recipe when all these peanuts are well? Peanuts, milk, milk, soya. That's it, that's all that's in there. And the milk and milk is in the chocolate. <laughs> J Ben says, I wage want. I don't go to wage watchers, I don't go to Slim World anymore either. But yeah, I'm not losing weight at the moment, funnily enough. Pancake down Tuesday, indeed it is. Jimmy's in, good morning, Jimmy. And Jones arrived. Have I missed much? I haven't missed much because there wasn't much, but I have done my haul. It wasn't very big. It was this stuff here. And that's all there was. I spent £14.50 this morning at the car boot sale. And £4 of it was on the shoes. So, yeah. So, yeah, what's everybody else been up to? Is everybody else having good sales? He's desperately trying to find the squeak in this giraffe and she hasn't got one. He can't understand why she won't squeak. 
Oh, pancake with a Reese's spread on it. That's not a bad idea. Joan's got no. no Joan's got nothing because she hasn't been out. Ryan says I expect a video. What of me making pancakes? I don't do cooking videos because my kitchen is not set up for that in the slightest, and because I'm too busy cooking and eating to bollocks around with the camera. He's managed to get his giraffe inside the bag for life, and he can't get it back out. <laughs> So yeah, is everybody, uh, Lisa's busy doll making sorting out her son's troubles. Car Karen says her sales are okay, not great, but okay. The dogs are going to go mental any second now because my son's just pulled up. So the dog's going to go absolutely crazy when they realise it's him coming up the path. Uh, Lex Oliver says rubbish sales, but I found a blue oyster cult belt buckle for £1.50 that I'd previously sold for 100 I would not know what I was looking at. I mean, all of these of you people who know these specialist things, because I, I buy general tat, and I wouldn't know an oyster, a blue oyster cult belt buckle if it stood up in my soup. I think these are it's amazing that you people know these things. I'm always astounded by people with specialist knowledge in any field because I'm I'm just a, I'm just a generalist. You know, I don't have any specialist knowledge in everything. Oh, Lex says no. <coughs> oh, a kaching. Joan Glenn Martin says, I've got 85 new drawings to list. I've done all the photos. Bought auction for £125, sold eight so far. I'm just into profit. Nice. Well done, Joan. I, I, I don't envy you the, um, the endless questions, though, from the pervs. Every time you put anything on remotely like that. What have I sold? I think it was an offer, Lisa. It is an offer on a blazer. And it's too low. I'm going to make a counter offer, so there may be another ka-ching if they... Um, if they accept. I'm sorry, I know the ka are very, very loud. I'm sorry about that. Oh, Joan hasn't had any pervy questions yet. Yes, Steve Green's like, oh, new drawings. You would be, Steve. You would be. See, my fringe is separated again, hasn't it? This is the thing with, with a full fringe. I have to have a full fringe. I've got a full forehead. Joan says she's got the drawings on Etsy, so less trouble on there. Yeah, more, uh, more vintage-minded people and art-minded people, perhaps, on Etsy, and less perverts i don't know <laughs> so yeah um steve how are your sales i haven't i haven't watched your latest sales video i must be honest i haven't i've got such a backlog on videos at the moment i've not had a good week i did say it at the beginning uh, there were very few people in when i said at the beginning but I, I lost a friend this week so it's not been it's not been a great week um and i've got a real backlog on videos i spent quite a lot of time just lying in bed lying in bed with whatever droning on on the telly and not really doing anything but it's cold as well isn't it it's warm in bed Karen's done 109 new listings this week. Uh, Peter Ray's got 20 vids to catch up on. That's okay, Lisa. It's um, I'm, I'm coming to terms with it now. It's been a few days. It's the the shock has worn off now. Um, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? Lex Oliver says bought a Ming vase for 50p too. <laughs> There's a lady called Sarah Creamer Blackwell on, on the reselling groups and she has the most amazing specialist knowledge. I'm so in awe of her knowledge and the things that she picks up at auctions and car boots that she pays pennies for that turn out to be worth hundreds. I'm so astonished by her knowledge. Hello, Anthony. You all right? Yeah. I'm live streaming. Okay. What have you got? Weetabix? Yes. Okay. Anthony's got Weetabix. So yeah, um, Joan says she might be the biggest pair of buying the drawings in the first place. Amanda says, someone please tell me they're photographing a listing today so I don't feel alone. Is anybody out there photographing a listing today? Anyone at all? Anyone? Anyone doing any work? I'm not listing today. Like I said, I've got to go out in a bit. So um, I will list all this probably tomorrow morning now. Joan Glenn Martin is photographing a listing today. There you go. You're not on your own, Amanda. And Ryan's listing this afternoon. How's, how's it going with you, Ryan? How's, uh, how's business? Is it all... All ticking along nicely. I know February's a bit of a slump time, isn't it? January's usually, January's usually, you know, January and February, not great. But Peter Ray's listing later, and then might make a YouTube video. J Ben's thinking about it, and ever as we all know, there's the thought accounts. Uh, Karen says done nine so far. That will do. Lisa Feathers to my spire. You spy an empty, an empty giant jammy dodger tin, Lisa. It's not a giant jammy dodger, wouldn't it be nice? I'd like a biscuit that size. Mm. That'd make a great thumbnail, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, I'd like a biscuit that size. But it is an empty tin, sadly. Sad but true. Steve's having a lazy day. His house is starting to look like a hoarder's house. 
Brian says sales have been okay. He took four weeks off listing over January, but sales were okay considering. Back at it now. Did you not find your sales dropped when you stopped listing? Because there's that general conversation that we always have on the reselling groups is that if you don't list, then you drop down in the search results and your sales drop accordingly. Did you find that that was likely, do you think, or not? Karen's made it to the sofa, so she's feeling a bit better. Glad to hear that, Karen. And Joan Glenn Martin is making ginger and fruit cake. I like ginger cake. I like ginger cake. I don't mind. I like fruit cake. I like, I like all cake. Al's Attic's joined us. Hi, Al's Attic. So, yeah, I've got, I've got to um, got to get in the shower. And even that's not tempting, because even though I know the water in the shower will be warm, is that bit, isn't it? When The bit when you get in where you're cold and the bit where you have to get out when you're cold again. <laughs> yeah, not looking forward to that. But the hair needs dealing with and everything needs dealing with. It's all gone a bit to pot, really, all of it. Yeah, it's been a funny old week. Graham Nichols has joined us. The business is almost zero right now, so I'm having a day off to have a lazy day and pull myself back up. Fair enough. Al's Attic says, I stopped listing over Christmas too. My sales mm. half. I started listing again, they're back on track. There's another ka -ching. And Steve Green says, also, he notices that when he doesn't list, the more he lists, the more he sells. I, I, yeah, I, think, I do think that's a thing. I just wondered if Ryan had noticed it. But he hasn't replied yet because he's sawned off somewhere. That's a counter offer on that jacket. That's a better offer than she gave me before. So, yes, you can have it for that price. Yes, I don't mind. That's fine. I'll live with that. Ah, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Go. I did have um, an offer the other day on one of those <coughs> money boxes. You know those Halifax money? And, and um, it was a very low offer compared to my price which I countered with quite a high offer and um, and then the, the buyer countered back and said um, these were given away free so I don't see why I should pay more than X amount do you not don't have it then <laughs> fair enough <laughs> just don't don't get stroppy with me people people of eBay when you're sending offers don't tell the seller what you think should happen because if the sellers remotely like me and RC cow they go don't buy it then I will take it to my grave I will be buried in an enormous tomb like Tutankhamun mm. crap around me rather than let you have it at the price you're telling me I should sell it for. Uh, Ryan says his sales did drop by about 20 to 30 percent and he was still but he's still packing stuff and doing relists every few days so very active on the store maybe that helps. Graham Nichols says the ka-ching took his eardrums I'm sorry I can't work out how to turn off my sound because I'm recording on my phone I can't work out how to turn off my sound and still make it all work I'm really sorry. <laughs> Um, Amanda says about Lex's cat just jumped again. <laughs> um, I've missed something about postage. I don't know what I missed, but I've missed something about postage. Oh, I've had that with postage. USA buyers are the worst for that. Yeah, I don't. The, the, the number of people who send you a message saying I don't see why I should pay this. Well, I'm going to have to pay postage on top. What do you think I'm doing with the postage? Sticking it in my back pocket? I'm not getting that. I'm sorry that you that you don't live next door to me. Apologise for that, but it's not my fault. <laughs> Lex Oliver says, mine normally are, Lisa. But I've been hanging bed sheets today, and for one reason that makes her very excited. Oh, it's not they're not asleep because they've been hanging bed sheets around, I see. What on the line? Are you putting a washing out on the line? What kind of weather have you got, Lex? <laughs> Ryan says, are you busy? Me? Well, I think it's just that one offer. It's that one offer just coming back and forth. I think that person's now paid. I'm not at all with it at the moment. Not at all with it. Yeah, that person has now bought that jacket and paid for it. So I've had it for a while. Be glad to see it go. But yeah, nothing really very exciting going on in my world. Frozen sheets crunchy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit, bit chilly for hanging the washing out. Peter Ray says it's cold, but the sun's out and there's blue sky in Epsom. I had an argument with my mother yesterday about blue sky. We were driving around. The sky, the sky in Bristol yesterday was grey. It was uniformly grey all over. I say uniformly. There were some bits that were less grey, but they were all still grey. They were diff different shades of grey. 50 shades of grey sky. My mother swore blind she could see a blue bit. I said, you've made it up. You've made it up. This conversation went on for about 20 minutes. I was like, there's no blue sky. All of the sky is grey. She said, I saw a blue bit. You did not see a blue bit. She's got dementia. <laughs> uh, one customer moaned about GSP, so I told her it was £15 shipping. She's not paid. I've done non-pay and she's whinging like a stuck pig. Carrie JN says, hi, Al. <laughs> I can't do an American accent. I apologise for that. I've probably just offended half of the Southwest. 
Al's Attic, have you ever thought about doing a vlog, Carl? I'd love to see your bag for a fiver setup. Bag for a fiver setup? Oh, you mean it when I go to the car boot? So I see he doesn't do fill a bag for five. I basically I fill my bag up and then I go and hold my handles on my bag open and show him what I've got. And he says, "Oh, give me so much." And he always does me a fair price because I buy a fair amount. And anything I can't sell, I quite often give him to resell. So um, we've got a kind of a bit of an understanding going on. Um, I don't tend to film when I'm out about it because I've got a shaky hand and I forget to film. And maybe I should get one of those um, crotch cams that Zahir uses. <laughs> Uh, Joan says it's sunny here washing on the line. Joan, aren't you in Wales? Is it is it warm enough for, for drying the washing on the line in Wales? And Graham says, do I have a label printer? I see that Zaheer is deliberating on Facebook whether to buy one or not. Best purchase ever for me. Peel stick done next. Uh, oh, Joan's in Essex. I don't know why you're talking in Wales. Um, I don't. I have a Dymo 450 label printer for the small labels that I put on clothing. It does for these ones. For these little ones here. But I don't have one to do postage labels and it's something I've considered a few times and not really not really plumped for because it's expensive. But I do print now, I do print all postage labels onto A4 adhesive sheets and then just cut them. So yeah, peel stick done. And that has revolutionised my life. <laughs> just to stop faffing about with the sellotape all the time. Changed my life. <laughs> David the name says, Where are you from in England? I'm in Bristol. I'm in sunny Bristol. Well, it was sunny earlier on. It's gone a bit overcast now. Anthony's creeping past the door. He's just let the dog in to wake Sarah up. Sarah is Natalie's best friend and he's just let the dog in so the dog will now bounce on Sarah's head. <laughs> Karen says, you're so techy, Carlo. I just write sticky labels for bags. It just saves time. I copy and paste for the... You're about for the clothing bags. I copy and paste the listing title into the dymo app into the dymo program and it prints out and that way i know what i'm searching for i know i've got the right one because the, the wording is exact so if my sold item says phase eight lovely brown silk dress then i look for the bag that says phase eight love and i know i've got the right one there's never any never any mistakes it's cut down on that steve's out steve's off out with the family <laughs> have a good day steve tell lacy she doesn't smell really much <laughs> David says, I see you are crafty. Do you ever do digital designers, all hands on arts and crafty stuff? I'm not particularly crafty, not particularly. Um, I have, I've, I've done crafts in the past, but I'm not particularly. Um, no, that's not me. How's the new office? Have I filled it up? I was thinking I might do a loft tour to show, to show how it's working, the new loft space. If, if people would be interested in seeing that, let me know. I might do a video of that. I nearly did it yesterday and then just didn't. <laughs> Karen says, I literally write M&S dress size 12, for example, but they're in random boxes, not in alphabetical order like yours. Do you know, Karen, it's made life so much easier. I don't have to worry about putting a uh, reference in the title to find it. I know that if it's a phase eight dress, it'll be in the P to Z box. You know, the dress is P to Z. And it's just made life so much easier. Like, when it comes to finding stuff, I can find stuff really quickly. Ian Hughes says, do you have a basement? If you're asking me, Ian, no, I don't have a basement, just the loft. I don't know whether I've missed something. Carrie says I meant retitle, but I don't know what, what I've missed. The chat's moving quite quickly, so I've if I've missed a question, then I apologise. If, you know, if, you, if you're asking a specific question, if you could write the word question in capitals before you ask it, that makes it so much easier to see it out of the chat, because otherwise the chat scrolls up and I missed it. Uh, Graham says, Carla's own Cash in the Attic tour. That's got winner written all over it. I have to say, those Cash in the Attic programs make me laugh. They go and they go round and they um and they and they I always find stuff in people's lofts that's worth a million pounds. And I'm like, if you came in my loft, you'd be like, what is all this old tat? Francis Matt has joined us and says, Salut, ça va? Oui, ça va bien, merci. Bonjour. Uh, Karen Fisher jo at John Brady. Did you sell all John Brady? Did you sell all your stuff at the car boot? Did you go and do a car boot, John? And how did it go? Ian Hughes says, "How big is your loft?" It's it's not that big. This is this this is a small three bedroom terraced house, and it's it's loft sized. <laughs> there is a loft video if you want to see it. There's a loft video of the conversion that my son did when he when he built my shelving and whatever. So, I think it's called Loft News. <laughs> uh, Lisa Fenn says, "I made myself my first ever dress last weekend, a corduroy 1960s style pinafore. I'm thrilled to bits with it. That sounds nice, Lisa. I I, I can't make clothes. Don't have the." Uh, 
don't have the talent for that. And Karen used to sell craft supplies to too many people willing to make 10p per hour. And Ryan says, the BBC's full of shit, only go to collector's houses. Exactly, they go to houses where they've got lofts full of antiques. So, you know. <laughs> oh, Carrie, question. What do you do if you retitle an item? Do you print another label? I never retitle an item. That's what I missed earlier on. Sorry. Um, I never retitle anything. I don't ever rewrite my titles. I very rarely rewrite my descriptions. I just relist and relist and reduce and reduce, and it always sells eventually. So yeah, I don't I don't retitle stuff. And Mary Miller said, "Do you list your items for ten or thirty days? Everything's on a thirty day listing. It used to be on a thirty day good till cancelled. Then I realised that things were relisting without. Um... Bear with me two seconds. Um, things were relisting." without me having the chance, without me realising that I wanted to reduce the prices or whatever. So I don't do anything on good till cancelled anymore. Everything is now on 30-day um, relist and then I can check and get rid of anything or, or reduce anything that needs to be a cheaper price. Ryan says we pay our TV licence for that crap. Yes, a sore point the TV licence. Bear in mind I don't watch anything the BBC put out anymore. It's a sore point paying the um, TV licence. Ian Hughes says, is that a cat you've got? Well, there's two dogs and a cat in this house, so you may have seen... Any one of them wandering around in the background? There is a cat here somewhere. That's not a cat standing there in that doorway. That's my son. <laughs> Somebody said, is that a cat you've got? I was like, no, that's my son. <laughs> you're looking to see if you're on screen. You are on screen. Yeah, don't, don't, don't scratch your bum or anything. People, people can see that. <laughs> there is a bit of a delay, yeah. Sorry, bear with me a second. Okay, um, the cat's filed under C in Carla's system. John Brody says he hopes he never has to do a car boot sale again this year. Just buy and will do. And Karen says she only watches EastEnders to keep her southern accent. Heather's just joined us. Hi, Heather. Nice to see you. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much done, Heather. I'm not, I've got not much else left to say, to be honest. I've got to go and jump in the shower and get ready to go out later on. It's going to be cold, isn't it? It's cold. I don't want to go out. I want to kind of hibernate. I want to pack up, pack up my duvet and my pillows and get down on the couch and put Netflix on and just give up on, give up on the outside world. Carrie says, question. Go on then, Carrie. What's your question? Natalie Brucey says, finally caught your live chat. Loving all your videos. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say that. I'm sadly just about to leave. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Lisa, I'm seeing a friend this afternoon. Ryan says, how many hours a week would you say you source in car charity shops car boot sales a week? Um, I do, I pop in every charity shop I go past. If I'm able to stop and pop in, I do. So um, I would say that I go in a charity shop most days. If there's if there's a little stretch of charity shops, I go in all of them. But I, I, I do a very quick whip round. I don't look in all the clothing. Um, so... Probably if you added up all the time in charity shops, it would probably not more than three hours in charity shops at the very most. And then an hour or so around the boot sale on a Sunday morning. Come the summer, it will be more because I will do more boot sales and I will stay longer. You know, there'll be there'll be, there'll be bigger and better boot sales, so there'll, there'll be more. Um, but yeah, probably at the moment, only about five hours sourcing of the week at the most. Carrie, do you then add an A to Z in the SKU area on the listing? No, I don't use the SKU area on the listing at all. Um, I know it's there and you can use it, but I don't. I just, I, everything is... It's in the boxes and it's listed alphabetically. So the label on the box, which I've just peeled off and won't now restick, says dresses K to O. And then if it's a dress that starts with with K, any any letter between K and O, then it's in that box. They're not alphabetical within the box, but obviously because they're in clear plastic bags, they're easy to find by colour. And then I can just check the label says the same as the listing title to make sure I've got the right item. Chloe Taylor says, new subscriber here. So glad I found your videos. Love them. Thank you, Chloe. That's nice of you to say that. Ryan, question. In the summer months, do you think it's right to get a burger at 5am from the car boot before it starts for four quid? Ah. I don't go at 5am. I never get to a car boot so before about 8am. I, I don't, I don't want to do that, that fighting with all the dealers and whatever. I don't want to get there in the dark. And I don't eat burgers at 5am, although I quite often do have a burger if I happen to be there at lunchtime. <laughs> Ian Hughes, you ever heard of my pal Dougie Electra French? He loves a charity shop. Should he start live streaming this? I've no idea, Ian, if you think it'd be worth watching. Adendri38, good morning, Carla. Hope you're well. I'm very well, thank you. Nice to see you. Uh, Carrie says she needs to force herself to the car boot sales. It's cold. 
Ryan says lunchtime. It's okay to have a burger at lunchtime. Yeah, I don't have a burger at five a.m. I, I couldn't eat anything that early in the morning. I'm not no, you know, I'm 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 good at food. I've got I've got the hang of food, no problem, but not at five a.m. Calvin's husband does a great impression of Danny Dyer, apparently. <laughs> Somebody said to me that Danny Dyer is actually right posh, and that all, all of that um, all of that East End accent is put on. I don't know if that's true. Don't know if that's correct. What was what like that geezer on Britain's Got Talent a few years ago? I didn't see that. Toby morning, have I missed the reseating? Yes, you have. I have eaten one of these so far on camera this morning. <laughs> No, not even a Reese's peanut butter egg at 5am. Nothing at 5am. I don't eat first thing. When I was a smoker, I couldn't smoke first thing either. I mean, I gave up years ago and I gave it nearly 20 years ago. But I couldn't smoke first thing. You know, people get out of bed and the first thing they reach for a cigarette and I'd have been sick. Carrie, question. Only one more. Sorry. Are the plastic bags that you store them in the ones you actually post to customer? Yeah, it comes, it comes out of there in its plastic bag. And then it goes into the mailing bag. And away it goes. And obviously a label on the outside, otherwise it would never get there, would it? <laughs> but yeah, that's so I know Caroline, that was me and Caroline were having this conversation the other day. She stores them in bags like this, but then she takes them out of the bag to post them so that she can reuse the bags. I don't. I think it's that to, what, to me, when that gets to the customer, that looks nice. That looks like it's been professionally cared for, professionally dealt with. You're not that I'm saying Caroline's not professional, of course she very much is. But for me I like I like the way that looks when it reaches the customer. If I remember and I very, very rarely do. But if I remember, I stick one of these on the outside of the bag. I don't know if you'll be able to read that, but it says, um, many thanks for your purchase. I hope it meets all your expectations. If so, please leave me positive feedback. I'll be delighted to do the same. If for any reason you're not happy, please contact me through eBay and I will do my best to resolve the issue and then my eBay ID on it. I fr frequently don't remember to put those in the bags, but I always intend to. <coughs> Carrie says she reuses the bags as well. Uh, they're talking about Britain's Got Talent, which I don't watch. Toby says, Caroline needs, needs to save the money to pay the butler. <laughs> it's not just the butler, it's the gardener, it's the footman, it's the housemaids, it's the housekeeper, it's the, the personal chef, the trainer, <laughs> the gatekeeper. Karen posts it in the bags as well, yeah. I can't be bothered with taking it out of the bags and, and yeah, it's, it's quicker my way. It slides nicely into the mailing bag and it's it's a very quick, very quick process that's that's obviously the international sign for process you know like that's the international sign for bringing me the bill that's the international sign for process ryan says i put lavender scent bags in with my clothing sales extra posh for an extra service a i don't think you do i just, just don't believe you i think you're fibbing and b i'd hate that because i can't stand the smell of lavender <laughs> graham puts thank you cards in with all his sales i never request feedback but i find that they will leave positive feedback since using the cards that's it mine says you know if you're pleased leave me positive feedback and i'll do the same it doesn't say you know sometimes you get those slips if you buy stuff from the chinese sellers you get a slip in so you know and the other thing i never do is they send a follow-up email demanding feedback as well which i never ever do my feedback is set automatically once you've left me positive feedback, my feedback, my eBay will automatically leave you positive feedback on my behalf. Every now and again, I go in and do I, I do a batch of very old ones that haven't, you know, they haven't left me any. But generally, it's done on the auto. I'm bloody freezing. <laughs> so cold. I'm in my house. Shouldn't be cold in my house. <laughs> Right, I've been going for about 40 minutes, I think, which is probably more than enough time to keep you good people from your Sundays. Oh, so Carrie's got another question. This is the last one. Do you have a list or link of the bags, etc., that you buy? If you look on my last video, or the one before, there is a link on that one. I can't remember. I think it's the live stream that I did with Caroline last week. So, like, two videos ago. If you go to my channel, I've got bad connection now. Yeah, there's a link on there um, to the bags that I buy. I buy them on eBay. And Toby says, are the people at the back waiting for the loo? Yes, yes, that's the queue for the toilet. No, that's Anthony. Um, Natalie's best friend is still in bed. She, she had a sleepover last night and he's talking at her through the door. <laughs> that's, that's not the queue for the toilet. <laughs> right. The connection is going. I'm getting poor connection, presumably because one of them's on the Internet as well as chatting. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. It's been lovely to speak to you all as usual. Um, have a great, enjoy your Sunday. Have a great week. I will hopefully see you next Sunday with another haul and chat. Um, I might do a loft. I might do a loft 
tour in the week if anybody wants it. Oh, and um, sorry, this it's very difficult doing this this modding. I'm gonna have to give you all spanners. Everybody's getting a spanner next time. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm going now. I will speak to you all soon. Have a lovely Sunday and a lovely week, Karen. Karen, I hope you feel better soon. And um, speak to you all soon. Bye.